So we'll familiarize you with the features of SIM table. What we have is a traditional SAM table, a mainstay tool for wildfire training. And what we've done is incorporated satellite imagery, projection, and photosensor technology to create an interactive surface on the sand. And what that allows us to do is use a regular laser pointer, and we can point it at the sand here and begin to conduct ourselves through a user interface. So we can go here and you see we have Santa Fe loaded up. And what this will allow us to do is we'll see a color-coded spectrum that goes from lowest elevation to highest following the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So here this blue area is indicating a uh, an area of elevated terrain. So we'll take away the sand from lower elevations and begin to shape it like so, so that we begin to see a three-dimensional topography underneath the projection. Now I'll illustrate here with the cursor how we can begin to see the cursor go up the hill and down the hill. And as we know, slope is a very key factor in understanding fire behavior as fire moves uphill. What we can also begin to do is to lay in layers such as a fuels layer, which also allows us to see roads, different landmarks, and we become familiar uh, with the area. And if we use this fly to mode here, and we punch the uh, laser pointer on the city of Santa Fe, you'll see Google Earth go fly there. And we can begin to see a bird's eye view and gain awareness of different areas uh, in relation to different landmarks. So here's the watershed that provides the public water utility for the city. Let's say we wanted to go up there to conduct some mitigation or thinning efforts. We can go in and begin to have a look at the area and have a look around and gain a better understanding of where we might access different resources or get resources or people out. So now we understand things about our fuels landmarks, different situational awareness. So here you can see we're understanding more about the fuels as this gives us the numerical and color coding of the different types of fuels such as short needle litter, uh, brush and slash, tall grass, and we understand now slope, fuels, in relation to different uh, situational awareness, different landmarks. And the third thing we need is wind. So we can come over here and we can set our wind by just making this needle go from 0 to 50 miles an hour from the inside of the circle to the outer rim. Let's set it at about 20 heading north northeast. And we can go ahead and start a fire. So we'll use our fire tool, point it at the sand, and now we begin to see in real time, the clock here is already about an hour and a half, two hours in, and we see the fire begin to spread uphill following the direction of the wind. We already have about 35 to 40 acres uh, being uh, affected here about five to six hours in. If we want to understand the fire's behavior with in relation to the fuels layer, we can go back here and watch it follow different fuels layers as they have different acceleration rates. And at this point, we can go ahead and start to use different types of tools to uh, fight the fire so we can lay in a slurry bomber or tanker line by simply holding down and dragging a line across like this. And as the fire reaches that, it will uh, set a retardant rate depending on the, uh, the, uh, the wind and the fuels type. Usually lasts anywhere from an hour, to hour and a half to two hours. We can go ahead and simulate crews dig crews, type 1, type 2, that might come in and start to flank the fire and zero out the fuels in this manner. We can also simulate a uh, prescribed burn. So if we click here and then drag our line, we will then see a simulated uh, controlled burn. We can pause it. We can reset it. And for the purposes of our demonstration here, 
Let's go ahead and go to another area. Let's pick El Dorado, which is a neighborhood just south of Santa Fe. Let's have a look at our terrain. Higher elevations here, so we just simply push the sand. Create our, create our topography. Rough it in like that. And what we can do is begin to imagine that we're using this tool more importantly, or most importantly, in a wildland urban interface situation for public outreach and education to better facilitate the communication between the uh, fire expert community and the public or the private landowner. So what we can do is we can take them and bring in a satellite image that allows them to see their neighborhood we can fly to it. As you'll see, we'll go south of Santa Fe here to the El Dorado area, and they can begin to see their neighborhood, see their streets, their homes, and uh, see, you know, close to home, the situational awareness, and begin to understand fire behavior in and around their own homes. So you can educate them about the slope and the terrain of the area. We can educate them about the fuels in their area. And then set the wind at an average day and let them imagine a cigarette thrown off the highway. And they can begin to see the fire as it spreads and in about two hours there's already affected about 30 acres and the fire is reaching their back door and going into their streets. So to help them better understand the need for mitigation techniques and preventative measures, we can begin to propose uh, different measures like such as a fire break. We could come in and dig a fire break and draw that here and then we could rerun a simulation Here's that cigarette thrown out off the highway again. And they begin to understand the benefits of these preventative measures. At three hours where the fire was already in their neighborhood now, there's plenty of time for the authorities to get there and to basically safely, safely take care of the fire before it gets out of hand. But let's say they don't want you digging on their property or they don't want to uh, you know, you, you to ruin their view, so to speak. Well, what we can also do is educate them about mitigation techniques. We can come in and draw or paint in a different fuel type. This is basically a type 2 fuel at which the canopy would be lifted, the dead litter taken away, and the grass mown down to a really short level so that basically what we have is a, a, a less potential for uh, the fire getting out of hand or burning a natural fire, uh, fire break, so to speak, that doesn't ruin their view. So we can rerun the fire with this new fuel type. And they can imagine, or you can imagine, uh, educating them about how they can be proactive on their own. They can come in and rake out the dead fuels, mow the grass, and create a natural fire break on their own that keeps their neighborhood safe. So you begin to understand how this tool becomes extremely powerful in the wildland urban interface and public outreach and education uh, areas. We can go in and show specific geographies, use different layers to educate people about the different elements that affect fire in and around their own homes and better facilitate the preventative measures that will keep fire uh, from affecting homes and affecting the public before it even starts. So thank you for your time and attention and uh, let us know if you need any more information about the SIM table. Thank you very much.